promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. ranked tennis player in the world. This year he won seven singles titles including the U.S. Open and Sunday he had his biggest payday in tennis winning five hundred and eighty three thousand dollars at the stakes match in West Palm Beach. Lundell has won it. it. And Yvonne Lundell joins Jim Lampley and me this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Five hundred and eighty three thousand for a boy from Czechoslovakia. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, big amount of money. It's uh, just amazing. Did you ever think that that's what tennis would become? A payday worth a half a million dollars for you? No, I never thought of that uh, when I was starting. Um, I never had an idea that I will ever make it, make it, let's say, to the pro tour at all. And uh, once you make it to the pro tour, you you want to improve 10 spots, 20 spots, and getting that far, I never had any dream about it. So when you were a baby, and you started out in tennis in Czechoslovakia, what were your motivations on the court to be better? Oh, I just enjoyed the game. Um, my parents, they both played tennis, and uh, I, uh, I enjoyed playing against them. Uh, with my mother, we always got into fight and uh, competition on the court, and uh, with my father, he, he kept uh, working on my game, and uh, I was when I thought I learned something, I wanted to go and beat my mother with it. <laughs> it never worked until I was 15. <laughs> do, do you, does your mother ever win now? No, nah, no, I don't let her anymore. She never let me win, so. <laughs> he doesn't let many other people win as well. Yvonne, you've been number one for a significant period of time, a couple of years now, and it strikes everyone that follows the sport that for cosmetic reasons, in certain circles, you've never been given the respect that you would seem to deserve as a result of your status. Does that bother you less and less as time goes by? Oh, it, it sure bothers you a little bit, but I think, uh, I think the problem, uh, or not the problem, the thing is that uh, when you are there at the present, uh, everybody looks at it a little differently. I have been there just over two years, and um, it takes a little more to gain more respect than that. Uh, if I can stay there maybe another three, four years, I think I will get it. But this year at the U.S. Open, when you were down a set against my, Matt Philander, the crowd didn't pull for you as an underdog like they do so many tennis players. Uh, do you notice that the crowd in those times in which you really need that boost, they just aren't there for you? Uh, I think they are there sometimes. Sometimes they're not. Um, for example, they were there at the 84 French Open uh, when I beat McEnroe coming back from two sets to love down. Um, as far as this year's Open goes, I don't know. Uh, I thought they they were pretty good to me. They, they supported me well. They, they saw I was struggling a little bit, but uh, uh, I didn't think of myself as an underdog even after one set down. So maybe they didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, do you think that the crowd will treat you more favorably once you've won Wimbledon? Um, I would like to find that. Find out if, uh, if that's the case. Um, I, I would think so. Um, you know, Wimbledon is one of the things or one of the titles which gives, gains much more respect and um, it's the main thing now for you isn't it well it is one of the two main things um, there is Australian Open which uh, I would love to win very much too but uh, Wimbledon is uh, a little bigger than that tell me about yourself do you what are some of your passions your hobbies I don't know how much time do we have you just only play tennis <laughs> uh, unfortunately not um, I do a lot of things uh, I like uh, you know, going to the movies I enjoy going out for dinners don't go to this though. Do you though. cook? No, I don't cook. Last time I cooked, uh, I put uh, some eggs into the pan and I wanted to do hard-boiled eggs. Forgot about one little detail, water. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the cook there are a lot of people in Greenwich, Connecticut who forget about that, Ivan, yeah. just like all the rest <laughs> of your neighbors. I have to tell you, the cook was not too impressed with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep hearing about this big grand house of yours. Is it decorated or is this just one huge estate? Have you spent any time? Yes, I spent quite a time at quite uh, some time at home, uh, usually about four months a year, th but that's including playing the U.S. Open, the Masters, or training for those two. But Not much time. But no. thank you for stopping by and joining us here this morning. Oh, thank you. Yvonne Wendell. And we'll be back with more right after this. Boris Becker did eliminate Becker with a great lob right here for the winner. Becker needed a straight set win over Lindell to advance today, but he came up short.
losing 6-4, 6-7, 6-3. In today's other match, Stefan Edberg serving in the near court against Mats Wielander. Join Lindell as the only other player to win all three of the, his round-robin matches with a 6-2, 7-6 win. Uh, Mats Wielander, in spite of the loss, will advance to tomorrow's semifinals with Lindell and Edberg and Brad Gilbert, who also moves on uh, the finals. Is set Mats Wielander in straight sets to win the Nabisco Championship. Let's go to the videotape. It was all Lendl. This is V. Lander serving top of the screen. Lendl at the bottom. And look at Lendl just completely control the court with all assortments of shots and showed again why he is the number one player in the world today. Here he comes up. And once again, Lendl puts it away right there with his point coming up. Lendl backhand. That's it. Then Lendl top of the screen. A uh, V-Lander at the bottom. This is Lendl's point. Watch the crossing shot by Lendl and the top of the screen coming up. And boom, puts it by V-Lander. Then match point. Here it is. V-Lander serving bottom of the screen. Lendl to the top. It's all over. And Lendl beats V-Lander. 6-2, uh, 6, -two, six, -two, six -three, And has now beaten him six straight times. 13 of the last 19. Only one game. It began on the hallowed courts of Wimbledon where a 22-year-old Australian, Pat Cash, thoroughly dominated a much more mature Yvonne Lendl. The tournament's 11th seed committed only 11 unforced errors in the final, rendering Lendl the number two seed virtually helpless. By the end of the third set, Lendl still possessed his rocketing serve, but he repeatedly committed volley errors. Leading six games to five in the third, Cash was almost effortless in his attack. Then, at triple championship point, Lendl finally succumbed to the spirited intensity of Pat Cash. With a 7-6, 6-2, 7-5 victory, Cash became the 11th Australian to win the Wimbledon Trophy. Disregarding the usual protocol of the British tennis hierarchy, Cash scaled the bleachers at Wimbledon Meadow to embrace his father. A perfect ending to a nearly flawless afternoon of tennis. While Wimbledon was a duel between emotional electricity and mechanical perfection, the U.S. Open was simply an all-out endurance test. Once again, Lendl was at center court serving up a rematch of his French Open marathon with Mats Wielander. Lendl had taken nearly five hours to conquer the Swede in June, and their repeat performance at Flushing Meadow proved to be yet another protracted comparison of strategies. Lendl was going for his third straight U.S. Open singles championship, but v -Lander matched him point for point. The contest was already approaching the four-hour mark when v -Lander floated a spectacular topspin lob over Lendl. In addition to his lightning serve, Lendl's strong volley skills returned, staking him to a narrow lead in the fourth set. Wielander used a last chance defensive lob to pull back into Deuce in the fourth set. But it was Lendl who possessed the stamina to complete the marathon. Winning 6-7, six, 6-love, seven, six 7-6, six, 6-4 seven, six, six, in 4 hours and 47 minutes. The year of the other guy was not only valid in men's tennis, it also seeped its way into the women's circuit. Played in the midst of a French windstorm, the women's singles finals in the French Open featured a chess match between Martina Navratilova and 17-year-old Steffi Graf. The match was an even display of offensive tactics. Graf's punching forehands and cross-court game versus Martina's aggressive net attacks.
after splitting the first two sets, Navratilova held a 5-3 advantage in the third. But Graf accelerated her pursuit, seizing a 6-5 lead with another forehand volley winner. Martin and Chris all win, although both Martin and Chris had to come from behind after losing the first set. All right, Vikings four. The emotional German took a 6-4, 4-6, 7-5 victory. Lander and Edberg both won in the quarter, so the semis are all set. V. Lander against Edberg, 7-5. She will play Steffi Graf in the championship. Steffi also won straight sets. Men's semis, Lendl against Cash, V. Lander against Edberg. And finally, it's Jay Hoffman. Over her perennial nemesis, Martina Navratilova. Chris, a winner in straight sets. A good point here. That's Martina in the far court. She continues to come to the net. Chris trying to pass her. Martina up to the task until finally right here. Nice move on the run. And Martina goes down to defeat 6-2-7-5. Chris will take on Steffi Graf in the finals. That's it in sports. Bill, looking forward to that Holmes-Tyson fight, are you? Absolutely. Miss change in sexual orientation.